Hey, man. Oh. Gosh. All right. Okay, Stuart, I know where we're going again. And um, drift away for a while. So um, I'll see you in about an hour. Oh, it's a saw. Um, all right, I'll see you in a bit. <clears throat> The fifth quality we will look at today 
is represented in the Bible by Philip. The quality that we are talking about is the union with your desires. Now, this may seem like a strange title. Are you not trying to remove your desires? Are you trying to come back to the true consciousness where is everything is desireless? Are you but to be aware and no more? So today we attempt to answer the question of how and why you come into form. How the formless becomes form. Or if you wish to be biblical, how the word becomes flesh. As you look around you, and you look at the personalities of those which surround you, you can see a myriad of forms and myriads of personality. And if you wish to conclude what your personality is like, you can see this in your relationship with others. If you are seeing anger externally, then of course it is anger internally. If you are seeing peace in the world, then there is a peace that is within you. In order to experience and to fully know any of the emotions or qualities that you wish to understand, you must fully embody that quality. If you wish to understand love, you must become love. It is only in the becoming of this that you then experience it fully and to its full degree. Let us change the words for a second. Do you think you could understand mediumship by reading a book on mediumship? Do you understand it by listening to a talk? or a demonstration. You only truly understand it when you live it and experience it and attempt to do it and understand the nuances of it, the way it works, why, why it is this way and not that way. You have to embody this fully and the more you embody it within your life, of course, the more you understand and learn. There are some which, let us say, want to understand painting and then become very passionate about painting for maybe a month or two. And at the end of that two months, they say, I know painting, and now I shall move on to something else. But it is only those which truly embodied for a period of time that experiences all the little parts. And of course, there are many different avenues to follow within each different expression. If you want to know love, you may want to know the lack of love. The love for self, the love for another, the love for a pet. The passion for a work. No theory will give you the answer.
So within yourself, within the consciousness, the desire to fully know one thing or another starts to bubble. And it desires to know a circumstance and lives this energy through the memory. Memory of what was. The memory of events of previous lives, previous experiences. The body becomes form and then the desire to live that quality becomes into the world. So you could say that the consciousness is the father and the creation is the son. So when you have a sufficient experience and sufficient clarity of mind, you can look around and see yourself everywhere and see that everything is an expression of the conscious state that is influenced by memory or mind and influenced by what you could so call karma, stored memory an action that is waiting as a seed for the reaction. So now you can see there becomes impurity in the expression. So the purity of love becomes conditional. So the desire for what the conscious state needs to learn becomes the body and becomes your life. Look and see your life everywhere. Look and see your desires everywhere. Look and see that the person next to you is just an expression of that consciousness. As within, so without. So the words used today may be somewhat complex. But when you see it all as an expression of you, then there is purity. So there is nothing to change in the world, just a realization of what is, to come back to this awareness. You do not need to change the world, just your perception of it. Just see your life and look at the consciousness that exists in every form that is available to your eyes. Around you are many different people. And every person, of course, is different. Different in, let's say, height and weight and skin color, hair color, their humor. And this is the wonder of consciousness in all its forms. Now you can either look at a person and see what is different. Their hair color is different to mine. Their career is different to me. Their culture. Or you can see what is the same. Now this of course does take a little training of the eye and the mind. 
to look at one person and see the truth that lies underneath the bodily surface. And again, this is how the phrase, when the eye is singular, the body is full of light. See the purity of that person. Look within them and do not judge for they are living the life that they desire. If you wish to change your life, you will not do it at the point of body. Often those who want a different life, they say, I will live in a different town, a different country. I will leave everything behind and start again. But then they travel to be exactly the same person. The person that gets off the aeroplane is the same person that gets on it. The work has to always be on yourself internally. So if you do wish to change your life and you do wish to experience other things, then you need to come to a deeper level than the body. You need to work initially with the mind, but also with your conscious state to understand the experience it desires. And as has expressed before, it is from this state that miracles happen at the point of consciousness. And I am sure there are those listening to this that say, how do I get to that point of consciousness? How do I come back to my reality of who I am? Well, if you had a thorn stuck in your toe, that was very deep, your first action would be, you could take another thorn, use it to remove the first thorn, and then throw them both away. So let me change these words and say your only desire is to come back to the desireless state. And from there, you create anything you want. And thus the circle is formed. It is the silence that gives you the option of creation. It is the pausing, the stopping, the realization of choice that initially gives you the desire to change. There are many which just walk along life as if in a fog. The vast majority of the human race does this. A simple act of stop. Reaction. Would give them more qualities in life than they know not.
So you are living the life that you wish with the body that gives you the best options for this, with those around you which give you the opportunity for the best expression of your life and to see who you are. If you see balance, let us say confusion and peace in two people around you, let us say one is confused and one is peaceful. Look for the unifying factor and see this within yourself. The need for people to put boundaries around is for their belief in protection, a belief in a need to retain identity, to feel safe and certain within a structure and a form, to give them identity that I am valuable or worthy. Yet what is it that they are trying to protect? See, a brick wall will supposedly keep the outside world from getting in. But if the internal being is in chaos and hasn't come back to peace and quiet and a controlled or disciplined mind, then the brick wall, brick wall is pointless. It may give a starting point, but eventually the work has to be done inside. It is easy to do an experiment for this. To let love build in your heart or peace build in your heart and see if you see it externally or not. I think you already know the answer. You have been given the call, but you are yet to walk the path. If you just see this as an expression of you and that's the end of your job. You can change your conscious state, your external state by coming only back to your consciousness. For those of you which feel there is a lack in their life. Let us say you think there is a lack of love. I don't have someone to love me or there are insufficient love in my life. This is not because love is not being sent to you but because you are not allowing love in. Too many people think they need to control the external world. It has to happen when I want it, how I want it, in the order that I want it to happen.
very soon these people find that there is no satisfaction. That there is no satisfaction, no achievement. They may gain skill or asset, but there's still no achievement. They are looking for the next thing to conquer. looking to do when the answer is to be. If you come back to the truth of your love in your heart, choose to give it away to the world. Many will call you rich. You may be clothesless and toothless, but you'll be rich of heart because you have set your ground in the quality of the true spiritual essence of love or peace, compassion and joy. So there are exercises if you wish to try them and they are stop, recenter yourself, pick the quality of spirit that you wish, and you'll find it will naturally manifest into the world. The temptation to go back to your old life and belief will come. A life of constant change. Come into the love of yourself. And this is what is meant. You require nothing. You have everything. And in the word of Jesus, go forth and live in peace. You have found your path. Come back to the quality of spirit. Live there. And life will manifest around you in the way that is required to reaffirm your belief. So you are an expression of, if you wish, your father, your consciousness. If you wish once more, your God, your creator. You are an expression of that creator and you are that creator. You and your father are one. Hmm. It is not that much of a complex theory to understand. but you must experience it and know it fully to comprehend it. If you wish to make this easier for yourself, if you wish to have aid in solving decisions or problems or coming back to this truth of your being, if you wish to know yourself, if you wish to come back to that essence,
The simple way is to stop, pause, and you may choose to ask yourself this question. What would spirit do now? This is a very powerful question. This is a question which will solve the problem of the world for you. What would spirit do now? And if you are quiet after asking this question, and if you listen and feel internally, the quality that you require will come right away. The answer and the solution Forgive me, the problem and the solution come at exactly the same time. There is no gap, but there is a perceived gap. Now, I do not wish to tell you what answer will come to you. If you wish to find out, do the exercise. Practice it for maybe a week. That is all. One week worth of practice to see if your life changes or not. As I have said before, all these exercises that we give are relatively simple. Not always easy, but simple. If you come back to your truth, you have choice, you have options, and then you can create internally first to be, to see the external expression. Come back to peace. If you can do that, then you cannot reject that there, if there is anger in the external world for you, then there must be anger and frustration on your internal world. Do not be limited. Become the unlimited form that you are. And see the world as the formless becoming form. Hmm. Over the series of talks that we have concluded, as I have said before, all of the big questions which have remained unanswered have at least been showing you the way to look for the answer and to give you the truth. There has been no topic held back. 
But there are still more things to talk about. And this will continue with the intention of helping you. The talks are not to help me. But to be an expression of me. Because my view is very different to yours. And I share this with you. So see yourself now with these exercises to be to see the world as a manifestation of your true self. Trust, no trust. Love, no love. And we can continue our talks next week. As I give another signpost to your journey home. God bless you all. Yeah, there's another bit he's forgotten to tell you. Well, I've got to tell it in my way, ain't I? And this is kind of aimed at a person in particular. You'll know who you are, love. You'll listen to the message. And hopefully you'll just realise. Around you, there's chaos, there's problems, and there's things that you must do and people that must change. There's those which are just go through difficulties in life and they're, they're having problems coping with their life. Only one person here, they're confronted with the death of another person. And I'm sure if you've, if you've got your own problems, but when you're confronted with helping somebody to pass, well, your perspective changes a little bit, doesn't it? And the point here is, if you would like to truly help another, if you'd like to truly help them to pass in the right way or for them to live their life in a more connected way. Well, you've got to be what they need. What I mean is you've got to be at peace for them to also be at peace. You see, if your internal world is, reflection, is reflected in your external world, then you can help another person by you being the, the very purity yourself, can't you? If you want this person to pass in a peaceful, easy manner, to leave with the feeling of peace, 
Or if you'd like that person to live a life of peace, to be peaceful with themselves. You can't change them, but you can if you want to be just peaceful yourself. If you are true and consistent, then they can be the very thing that you are. If you've got an angry boss, you ain't going to solve him by being more angry yourself, are you? You ain't going to help him by just saying, he's, a, he's another match, mate. Throw it on the fire, burn a bit brighter. Go on, you really go for it. You help him by just being peaceful. And this is what I say when you got to be the light and you got to let others come to the light, ain't you? You got to bring your light to their darkness. You don't have to go chasing it, you just be the light. And then they got no choice but to also be the light, ain't they? They can't they can't remain in the darkness forever. Not when you've got a beautiful bright light you got to shine. You just got to come back to the serenity, come back to the everything's okay, man. Do you know what I mean? So you getting stressed out about things and worried and, and all confused and thinking, what have I done? Well, that just adds more confusion. What have I done in the external world? Remember, every flower is an ambassador for spirit. Where was the last flower you saw stressed out? Go on, name them. No, you can't, can you? You've got to be like the lilies in the field. An expression of the true consciousness, the true self, the spiritual self, the, the loveliness on your inside. Is there a nice technical word for loveliness? I'm not sure there is. But loveliness seems about right today. <clears throat> so if you want to help another person... If you want to help them truly, don't. Just be the truth. And then you'll find there's more truth around in your life. Hmm. That's just another way of saying exactly what he said for 30 minutes. If you want to say, what would spirit do now? That's all nice. But another way is to say, let's come back to my loveliness. <laughs> Spoken like a true Charlie. <laughs> anyway, I hope you understand what I mean. And then you can get all biblical, if you like, and add a few nuts and bolts of different spirits and different saints and all that onto it. But in essence, it's exactly true. You know, what he's saying is right. Yeah? None of it's kind of all wishy-washy stuff. So I've just got to add a little bit of colour to the black and white, if you know what I mean. Come back to your loveliness. Arise, so lovely. Ha-ha. <laughs> hmm. 
If you quoted me on that, arise, Sir Lovely, nobody had a faintest clue what you're talking about, would they? I'll be lost in space going, what the hell's he going on about now? Well, ain't it true though, eh? Ain't it? Come on. You're going to disagree with me. Who wants a fight? Come on, I'm ready. You've got to come back to your... Your loveliness. It's, that's it, isn't it? That's, that's it. That's it. Hmm. There's your challenge for a week. Come back to your loveliness all week and, and see what life looks like on the outside, all right? If you want to follow the more technical way, listen to him. And if you want to find the Charlie way, you can listen to me. They're both pointing you in the same direction. Different words. All right, better go. I don't want to get into any more trouble. So, arise the lovely. <laughs> Quite like that. All right, so yeah, ta -ra. You know, Charlie is kind of like the uh, the end of a movie.